there will be a major dip around the Bitcoin having. I think a lot of people would welcome a crash. I think the institutions are trying as hard as they can not to let that happen. For the first time in history, Bitcoin broke through its previous all-time high before the anticipated halving. Now, what does this tell us about the nature of this bull run? Is it too late to get involved at this point? And what are the tools you should learn to make the most out of this cycle? To find out, I talked to two very special guests who need no introduction, Aaron and Austin Arnold, the founders of YouTube channel Altcoin Daily. I couldn't think of anyone else with a better understanding of the current sentiment, the hottest trends, and where this market is going. You don't want to go through this whole cycle without taking out your initial investment. Be prepared for the Solana ETF. Be prepared for the Chainlink ETF. Before we dive in, I'm thrilled to announce the upcoming return of Block Show, the leading event in the crypto and blockchain industry. This time, it's teaming up with Blockdown, a pioneer in the Web3 conference scene. Get ready to join us in Hong Kong for this crypto celebration from May 8 to 9. Don't miss out. Click the link in the description to learn more about this event. And remember, early bird tickets are limited. And now let's get into it. What do you think about the current bull cycle if we compare it to previous bull cycles that we saw in the past? I would say, um, number one, the, the demand shock and the supply shock have never been more clear. Crypto enthusiasts, enthusiasts know about the supply shock that happens at the halving where the supply faucet gets cut in half, which usually means if demand just stays the same, price goes up. Um, that's always been clear. Um, the demand shock this cycle pre-halving is, is so obvious just because we're seeing the amount of Bitcoin being mined into existence every day. We always have known that. And the amount of accumulation that BlackRock, Fidelity, all these institutional players are doing is, is, is explosive in a sense. And that's why price is going up. And that is a major difference between this cycle and I would say every other past cycle we've seen in crypto that largely... It has been retail driven in the past cycles. Retail was in before the institutions. This cycle, it's the institutions that are buying like crazy and retail largely isn't here yet based on the social engagement, based on Google trends. Um, so we're pre-retail. And if I could jump in, I just want to say that, you know, this time is different. People always ask, is this time different? And it's such a meme because, you know, Participants in the market mistakenly take that to mean, oh, we're never going to correct again because this time is different. The market's always going to go in ebbs and flows. There's always going to be bull markets and bear markets and every single asset that has a fluctuating price that always happens. I would say, however, that this time is very different. And maybe you can put up on the screen uh, the technology adoption life cycle chart. Um, and this is a chart where there is a big chasm in between early adopters and early majority. And I want to say this time is different because in my belief, Bitcoin has crossed that major chasm. It's no longer early adopters. Now we're in the early majority. I mean, BlackRock being in is a big deal. Multiple spot ETFs competing to, for demand is a big deal. These are the most successful ETFs in history. Like my brother said, Wall Street is in for real this time. That is a big differentiator. And although Bitcoin has crossed that chasm as the early majority, crypto at large has not. So there's tons of opportunity in crypto. There's tons of opportunity in Bitcoin. I wanted to just dive a bit deeper into um, this sentiment question. So Altcoin Daily, as we know, is one of the biggest uh, YouTube channels in crypto. And uh, of course, you have the pulse of the market in the sense that you get the response from the audience. People are watching you and they show their emotions, their interest. So looking at your audience, at the behavior of your audience lately, what is it telling you about this, the current crypto bull market? I think that there's maybe a sentiment in the broader market of crypto that everybody's bullish. Everybody thinks Bitcoin's getting over $100,000 tomorrow. I would say that a lot of crypto Twitter, or at least the audience that I'm seeing, the, the OGs that subscribe to Altcoin Daily, they're ready. They've dollar cost average in, they're smarter, they've been learning. There is a lot of newer people that came in the last six months, 12 months um, that are underweighted. They're hoping for a crash. They're not ultra bullish. They would love a 20% dip. So I think that there's a lot of confusion in the markets um, that people weren't ready for this run up so fast. Everybody's of course a long-term bullish, um, but you know, there's a, I think a lot of people would welcome a crash. I think the institutions are trying as hard as they can not to let that happen.
I personally wonder whether we are going to see a big crash when the halving is going to happen. So the halving may be a classic buy the rumor, sell, sell the news sort of event. What do you think? Giovanni, essentially what you're asking is, should we expect volatility in crypto for a major event? I personally am. Now, uh, we were very vocal on the channel that uh, the Bitcoin ETF approvals, at least I was, that it would be at least a mini buy the rumor, sell the news. I always expect that. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Um, but I think something we're seeing this cycle is any dip has been bought up quickly. For example, we touched all-time highs. We dipped back to 64, 63,000. That's a multi-thousand dollar dip, and it got bought up quickly, at least for now. Anything could happen. But I personally am expecting that buy the rumor, sell the news, but am prepared if it doesn't happen. BlackRock and Fidelity and all these Bitcoin ETF issuers seem to not be letting it happen. They don't want to get fall behind. They want to accumulate Bitcoin uh, for their ETF, so prepare for everything. And I just echo what Austin said. There will be a major dip around the Bitcoin having a major dip, and it's going to scare a lot of people away. But dips in a Bitcoin bull market are meant for buy. There is a lot of uh, hype around the possibility of an Ethereum ETF coming in May. Uh, Eric Balchunas, the senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg, even said that there is a 70% possibility that, that he's going to be approved. But a lot of analysts don't really agree with that. So I'm not really sure about that one, guys. What do you think? The Ethereum ETF approval, the spot Ethereum ETF, 100% will happen. Now, wh why will it happen? The same reason the Bitcoin one had to get approved. Uh, the grayscale verdict, if there's, if there's futures products, there's got to be spot products. Uh, the fact that there's Ethereum and Bitcoin ETFs, spot ETFs in Canada, in Europe already, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now, will it get delayed? That's very possible. Um, we're not seeing at this point the reshuffling and refiling between the SEC and the applicants like we saw in the months or so leading up to the approval of the Bitcoin one. Not that we can't see that. Now, it's important to note that BlackRock um, is a big player. You know, BlackRock wants um, an Ethereum ETF. BlackRock's into the tokenization of real world assets, and they have like a 99.9 .9 win rate with the Ethereum ETF or with the with ETFs in general. So with the Ethereum ETF, if BlackRock stays in and doesn't uh, pull out their application, it's going to get approved. Uh, it might get delayed, but it will get approved. Um, we could see them pull out so they don't, um, you know, lose on their win rate, but eventually it's going to get approved. And then more than that, that's incredibly bullish for crypto at large and Ethereum because people are finally starting to understand Bitcoin's uh, token dynamics in that the supply flow gets cut in half every four years, insanely bullish. But Ethereum's supply decreases at a you know fairly consistent rate. Since since the merge happened in whenever that was 2020, 2021, Ethereum's supply has been shrinking. Bitcoin's supply flow shrinks, Ethereum's supply shrinks. It's deflationary and people really haven't wrapped their heads around that yet. So if and when the spot Ethereum ETF gets approved, the same way we're seeing, you know, Bitcoin just, you know, uh, melt up, we could see the same thing with Ethereum, in my opinion. Austin, what do you think? I think uh, I love that answer, plain and simple. An ETH futures, uh, a Bitcoin futures ETF was the reason we got a Bitcoin spot ETF. We already have an ETH, ETH futures ETF, so that was the same logic. My bias says it happens this year. And then be prepared for the Solana ETF. Be prepared for the Chainlink ETF. I don't think that stuff happens anytime soon. I think Bitcoin and Ethereum have a lot better chance in the near term. But eventually, Wall Street's going to want to have ETFs for all their products. They're not ideological. They're in it to, you know, put out products so they can make a, a regulated fee on them. Besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, what are the crypto sectors that you feel more excited about at the moment, guys? I'm going to give you two because maybe you'd consider this first answer a cop out. I One of the biggest trends I'm excited for in this crypto bull market is transaction and store value. So that would be Bitcoin. And you know I've been bullish on that for years, but I think it's never been more obvious with the inflation, with the um, macro uncertainties in terms of governments, fiat money, um, and in terms of the use case that Bitcoin was built for, we're seeing that now. So as a store value, Bitcoin this cycle, never been more clear. If I had to pick one other trend I'm bullish on, options are uh, Deepin, AI, gaming, etc. 
I'm bullish on all of them in different ways, but to me, what has the best product market fit has always been gaming. Just because gamers are spending hundreds of millions of dollars in in-game assets they don't own. Those were narratives from last cycle. The games and the integration have only got better. So to me, it's a no-brainer, crypto gaming. You know, a lot of these games have been building for years, and it does take years to build a good AAA game. And we're finally starting to see them come out in the market. And, you know, gaming, it, it doesn't matter what the Fed does. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin's price is up. One good game will bring in millions of people. We know that one of the most important things besides picking the right trends is actually knowing how to exit the market at the right moment. Uh, we don't want our audience to go all the way up and then uh, back down without actually uh, gaining anything from, from this cycle. So what do you think is a good strategy for people that are watching us? Any suggestion, any, any recommendations in terms of uh, uh, taking profits? Okay. What's the best profit-taking strategy? You don't want to go through this whole cycle without taking out your initial investment, without locking in some profit. That's, you know, don't get burnt. Guys, there's so many people who get burnt. That's the one way you can't get burnt. If you get a 2x, 3x, whatever it is, take out your initial investment. You might be thinking, oh, but like if I keep it, then I have that much more if it gets that high. Pressing the sell button is the hardest thing to do. Um, it's You'll have a much better time um, if you, you like have a plan in the beginning. I'm going to sell some when it gets to you know 20% up or 120% up. Have a plan and stick to it and do not deviate. I would say that there's some Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few more quality alts that we talk about on our channel that I have a hodl position. I'm not going to sell for a long time. Um, you know, I, I'm going to sell maybe some, but there, there's you know some I'm just taking for this decade. And also the number, finally, let's. this is my final thing. One of the number one mistakes that I see people make in every bull market is new people thinking that they can time the market and, oh, Bitcoin pumped up to 50,000 and went from 30,000 to 50,000. Well, it's going to, you know, have a correction soon. I'll just move over to stable coins. Then the market pumps up to 60,000. Now you're stuck in stable coins. Thinking you can time the market that way, it's always bad news unless you're a professional experienced trader or at least have been in cryptocurrency for one full cycle, if not two. What would be your price target for Bitcoin or on a price range you're looking at for this crypto, for this Bitcoin bull cycle? I think just looking at history of Bitcoin cycles, we see the halving affects price. You cut the supply faucet in half and demand just stays the same. Price is going to go up. Now, everything we're seeing in the market from institutions, demand isn't staying the same. Demand is going up as well, which is even more bullish for price. But just basing off history, we see that the Bitcoin price has gone up at least 200% about 12-ish months after the halving. Now, sometimes it was 400%. Sometimes it was a lot more. Obviously, the larger an asset gets, there'll be diminishing returns. Um, but it's at least hit 200%, if not more, every time. Now, maybe because of diminishing turn returns this cycle, Bitcoin only increases 100% uh, 12-ish months after the halving. Right now, Bitcoin is a little over. But let's just say when the halving happens, maybe it will be around $60,000. My bull case for Bitcoin, uh, $60,000, 100% gain would be $120,000. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something bigger than most people expect. There's a lot of bearish mentality nowadays because people got burned from their price predictions last cycle because everybody thought it was going to 100K. Now, these ETFs, spot ETFs, a major difference. And I would just point to the chart of the gold ETFs from 2004. It gets shared a lot on Twitter. Uh, as soon as the spot ETFs launched for gold, gold's price just melted up for the next years it's possible we haven't even like started the bull run yet i mean i tend to think we are and it'll probably end around the same time it usually does but i keep the possibility open that the bull run hasn't started yet because the like you can just look at the chart hugely bullish but at that time when there was way more demand because of the etfs for gold they started mining more gold they do that with every single commodity corn if there's demand for corn they produce more corn with bitcoin they physically cannot do that. And in fact, the supply flow gets cut in half very soon. So if if things go crazy, it would not surprise me. What can go wrong? What can disrupt this bullish narrative that we are all hoping for? A black swan event obviously could crash Bitcoin hard. A black swan event to me would be, these are very probability wise, very, very, very low probability, but 
a double spend problem in Bitcoin's code. Now, Bitcoin's code is public. It's been looked on, looked over by the smartest minds globally, but a double spend problem, maybe if Satoshi came out of the woodwork, and I'm not talking about emails, I'm talking about Satoshi's alive, here he is. I think that would be bad for Bitcoin in the short run. Could not kill Bitcoin in the long run. Um, and then other than that, if the Fed continues to raise rates, that's obviously bad for risk assets. So I don't think, I think Bitcoin, maybe a bull run would be dampened for Bitcoin. I think that would affect altcoins more um, because the risk assets, maybe this this bull run would be a Bitcoin, more B Bitcoin driven bull run if the Fed just stays higher for longer. But again, it looks like they're going to have to cut. Markets are predicting they do cut later this year. Um, other than that, to me, there's nothing stopping Bitcoin. Supply and demand, open public code. It's never been more obvious, um, but obviously anything could happen. The market has not figured out how valuable this asset is. Um, like crypto, people have figured it out. And um, I'll jump in. I loved the answer my brother just gave. I would say that, I mean, obviously you and I are bullish and the people who do this every day for a living, but based on our comments, based on what I see when I watch TV, the consensus is bearish. I mean, still, when they go on CNBC, although, you know, there's allies like Joe Kernan who understand things, um, Andrew Sorkin um, and the other hosts, I, I see all the time, they're constantly, you know, just talking Bitcoin bulls down, um, which is kind of par for the course. So I'd say right now, the consensus is still bearish. I would say for the next nine months, generally, I'm, I think there's a very low chance that Black Swan happens because this is an election year for the U.S., I would say we could see something in 2025 or 2026, but it's my personal opinion that a lot of people in the real world are bearish now. And for the next nine, 11 months, um, I, I think we're going to see a bullish price action or a bullish consolidation. You talk to the smartest people in crypto, people that have a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience. Can you give me three personalities you think that our audience should follow in order to get great insights for this crypto bull market? If I want to learn about gaming, I go to Elio Trades on YouTube. He is deep. He's giving out the alpha. Um, he's just in these telegrams, talking to these founders. So I love that. I think Mark Yusko, great from Macro Insights. He has some of our best performing videos in terms of interviews. Um, great for Macro. And then other than that, I really like quant analysis, data-driven, sort of more fundamental analysis from Benjamin Cowan into the Cryptosverse. Those are three of my top three. Mark Cuban. Um you know, his, his, uh, business savvy, uh, and tech savviness is, is unmatched. And he gets in there and like, he plays with the protocol. So he knows what he's talking about. Gotta go Michael Saylor. I mean, there's nobody who, uh, can talk about, you know, where the demand and the value prop of Bitcoin is going to come from the Michael Saylor, maybe just Kathy Wood. We haven't had her on the channel yet. Um, and then this third guy, if you want like altcoin picks, and he's going to love it if he sees this in the interview, uh, Kyle Chasse actually gives, uh, He's a VC investor and founder, and he actually gives a lot of great, good alpha on uh, on altcoins. Guys, thanks a lot. And uh, let's keep in touch. Let's see how this bull market develops. Thank you for having us on. I will read Cointelegraph every single day as an aggregate to get the daily news. So honor being here. Thank you so much. And I guess my final thoughts of uh, somebody from Altcoin Daily audience, subscribe to Cointelegraph. Cointelegraph, hope to see you in our audience. And I just say, and I'm speaking certainly to the people who have been in crypto for at least a cycle. There's a lot of opportunity in the next couple of years. Nobody knows the future, but I think there's a lot of opportunity. And don't rest on your laurels. Don't get lazy. The difference between making $100,000 versus a million dollars is if you don't rest on your laurels, study the market every day, and uh, really you know, stay in tune with that. Thanks, guys.